Welcome to the 2012 Paul Laurie Invitational here at Deeside Golf Club near Aberdeen. This is the second staging of the 54-hole event and with a prize fund of £30,000, the field is high quality. 66 golfers looking to take home the £5,000 first prize. To do that, they'll have to conquer the 6,400-yard long parkland course. Running along the banks of the River Dee, it's tree-lined and testing and in great condition, despite a very poor summer weather-wise. Tournament host Paul Laurie has been in the form of his life this year, but European Tour wins and Ryder Cup heroics haven't distracted him from his continuing commitment to give something back to the game here in Scotland through his foundation. Before the tournament started, I caught up with Paul in the D-side clubhouse and asked him firstly how the idea for the Invitational came about. It firstly came about that um, the Tartan Tour, when I played, was uh, quite a lot of 72-hole events and a few 54-hole events, and it was made up of more tournaments than pro-ams. And then the last few years, it's kind of gone the other way. It's gone more a pro-am sort of tour to play on for the boys, and I thought it'd be quite nice if there was a couple of bigger events uh, for them to play on, because I think when you, when you learn to play pro-am circuit, you're learning one-day golf, which is not what the tour's about. So I thought it'd be nice if we tried to get a few more events on the tour where young pros are learning how to play, as we do on tour, which is three or four rounds most of the time. Thanks to the local sponsors and my sponsors, that's where the Invitational kind of came. Scottish PGA Secretary Michael McDougall is the man responsible for the Tartan Tour schedule. He's delighted the Scottish pros now have another large-scale tournament. It's a great addition uh, for, for the guys to play in. Paul's uh, idea was to increase, uh, to build it up year on year, and it's, it's just fantastic that there's a 54-hole event for the guys to, to come and play in up here at Deeside. We've been working hard to uh, try and increase playing opportunities for the guys, and, and particularly to, to have more uh, pro-only uh, events, and we've managed to do that this year through the Optical Express, 36 and 54 holers, and then of course Paul's Invitational. Uh, this week, the Scottish Championship, the Northern Open. So, yep, we're working hard to grow it all the time. Paul McKechnie couldn't finish the tournament due to injury, but he's just one of a number of players in the field who have recently competed at the highest level. There's probably 10 uh, to a dozen of the guys that have played uh, on either the, the main tour or challenge tours this year. Guys like Greg Hutch and Paul McKechnie, Graham Fox, our Scottish champion this year. So, uh, real strength and depth. And as well, to have the amateurs um, come in, we've got five of the elite amateurs coming to, to play with us this week. So, that, that adds an, another element to the whole event. Paul Shields is one of those five amateurs playing alongside the pros this week. The 21-year-old helped Scotland win the Home Internationals this year and missed qualifying for the Open at Lytham by a single shot. So what does he make of this week's tournament? Aberdeen's pretty cold this week. It's been pretty blowy, uh, but playing amongst all the Scottish PGA guys, and obviously it's a great honour to play with Paul. It's great to see where you're at uh, level-wise. Keeping a close eye on the amateurs this week is national coach Ian Ray, who's in no doubt just how valuable an experience this is for his players. I think this tournament's phenomenal. I mean, putting this on for the guys in the Tartan Tour and giving us some, you know, five invites is great. It's a great experience. Uh, Paul does a fantastic job. I mean, he's a great ambassador for Scottish golf. He does uh, so many things with his foundation, and to do this in the week before the Ryder Cup is phenomenal. Paul Shields obviously enjoying himself here at D-side, here tapping in for a par on the last, and then opening one under par 69 to be leading amateur and tied for sixth overall. This time last year, Paul's good friend David Law narrowly missed out on a place in the Walker Cup team for the match along the road at Royal Aberdeen. The local youngster responded by winning the Tartan Tours Northern Open while still an amateur. Now having joined the professional ranks, he's experiencing the joys of long-distance travel, taking any playing opportunity he can. He arrived home the day before Paul's tournament, a little jet-lagged. <laughs> I was in Kazakhstan playing a Challenge Tour event. Unfortunately, missed the cut by one, um, so I was going to try and get an early flight home, but they were all fully booked, so I had to wait until my flight got in it um, Monday lunchtime. David was the first player to win the Scottish Boys and Men's Amateur Championship in the same year, and he's benefited from the support of this week's host as part of his foundation. 
Well, I've been in the foundation for uh, I think it's four and a half years now, um, and I mean right from the start he's helped me a great deal. You know, not only me and my golf, but my parents, and um, you know, helping us out financially and stuff, which has been uh, tremendous. But you know, it's just the, the time and the effort that Paul puts into his foundation and my game personally is uh, it's pretty special, to be honest. So what about this week? Well, David perhaps feeling the effects of his travelling. Here finishing round one with a bogey and a three over par 73. Let's take a look now at some of the other action from the opening round. And here's the host, Alan. 192 yards, par three down the hill. Paul over it now. Holds probably not playing its uh, true length of 192 yards, I say, straight down. Straight downhill, and that's a beautiful opening tee shot from the, from the host, and that'll uh, hopefully set Paul up for a nice opening birdie too. Here's Graham Fox, player you know well. Yep, Graham Fox having a great year this year. Rob, he's a Scottish PJ champion, and this looks good, and he's got it. What a fantastic opening birdie putt there from Graham Fox, and that'll be him one under par for his round. Out the traps early, and I think he could do with a shave, Rob, but. Uh, He's uh, playing great this year, and uh, back to the host. That's for his opening birdie. Wants to follow in Mr. Fox, and he's oh, he's just pushed it a little bit. A wee bit of a deceleration there from Paul. Didn't quite get the putter through that one. But no damage done. It's a nice uh, opening par three for Paul, and uh, he'll move on to the next at level par. Paul without his usual caddy on board, David Kenny, because he's playing. He's a professional himself. And this to go three under at number six, eventually finishing three over with a 73. Yeah, David doesn't play uh, too much now, as, as you say, Rob. He's uh, concentrating on his caddy career, and it's, uh, it's a good bag to have in Paul's. Here's Keir McNichol, a young pro based at Gallon. And this for birdie from long range at the first. Fantastic putt. And he finished one over, tied for 12th after round one. And here's Codders, Chris Kelly, fourth shot at the par five third. Needs to chip it under the tree. Played that well, and he's got that up to three, four feet, and hopefully that'll be a par for Chris. You taught him all he knows as well. I did indeed, Robbie. Uh, used to work for me when I was the head professional at Clover Golf Club in Mulgai. And I think Chris, to be fair, has put on a few pounds since then. And Chris went on to shoot one under par 69. Paul Laurie's son, Craig, Chippy Jr, showing what he can do. Great experience for him this week, playing with the boys, and uh, hopefully he'll knock that one in. And I think uh, a canny resemblance to his dad. Start of the day belongs to Fraserburgh's Chris Nicholl. Three birdies in a row for three under par. Great start for him, Rob. Chris from uh, Fraserburgh Golf Club, not too far away. Playing his golf this year on the Alps Satellite Tour with uh, a fair bit of success. He's been having a good year, Chris, so one to look out for this week. And finished with a 72 for two over par. This is Scott Henderson. Yeah, big Scotty attached to the Kings Links, another local lad not far away. And uh, Scott is struggling in this hole a little bit. Uh, par five, that's his fourth shot. And uh, Scott will go on and finish at uh, tied sixth on one under par. Feeling the cold a bit, get the tammy on. Order of Merit leader Greg Hutchin, and you'd expect him to be in contention this week, wouldn't you? Yeah, he's a great player, uh, Rob. Greg's been around for a, a few years, um, Challenge Tour, European Tour. Likes using the, the yellow ball and knocks that one in. And uh, Greg finished on two under and to be tied fourth. Here's Jordan Findlay, great amateur record now, part of Paul's foundation team, and here moving himself to two under par. He's played that nicely, pitched up, plenty of green to work with. Ball rolls up, and he's got it. Yeah, and I think uh, I think we'll concede Jordan that one, and uh, he'll be enjoying his week. Three more birdies and two bogeys, and he finished three under, tied second. Here's Welshman Gareth Wright, Alan at 14. Oh, he's a big hitter, this boy. Uh, fantastic, and uh, that's a great looking shot. Oh, not just a long hitter, Rob, but obviously got a great short game to match, and that's a. A fantastic birdie there for Gareth Wright, this year's British professional champion, so again, having a great year. Went to two under there and finished at two under par as well. Paul Laurie in the rain, birdie putt, I think he likes it. He's missed a few today, but well done, Paul, and that was a, 
a great finish for him and um, not the best of rounds for him, a bit of a slow start, level part, but he gives us a little smile and uh, just inside the top 10. Shot of the day in the sunshine this time at 18, Chris McCallman. What a shot that was, chipping in for a birdie to finish at three over a par. He enjoyed that one, didn't he? <laughs> Nice way to finish, a bit of a struggle for him, but uh, nice way to finish, that'll make lunch a little bit uh, tastier for him. Tying for second place at three under par after a slow start, Aberdonian Greg McBain, who thinks that perhaps local knowledge helped. I played the, the old course a lot as a junior, um, but the changes they made in the, the new setup here um, is fantastic. Um, the course is obviously in great shape for the, the weather we've had as well, so um, looking forward to pushing on. But top of the leaderboard after day one, after a five under par 65, was another local lad, Terry Matheson, also a fan of the D-side course. Just got off to a good start really, I mean, birdie first and just really, after that I just fell into place, I've been sort of got to pace the greens really quick, which is a good help. I played a lot here as a junior and uh, I've seen the change and it's great, the fantastic setup now they've got, it's really good. I mean, I think the putting used to be the first green there, so it's a big change round, it's, uh, I've seen it coming through, it's really matured really well, and the driving range of facilities of course are superb. And well done to Terry Matheson after his first round, 65. Paul Shields, one under par, the amateur, 69, tied sixth. And of course, we can't forget about our host, Paul Laurie, 70 for tie 10th.